One of the biggest advantages that many people don't take advantage of in game right now is voice comm. The creator community in Valve has been trending more and more towards a relatively silent experience, and as much as I understand the potential reasons for why you might do this in solo queue, communicating in voice chat is just a free benefit that we as players should be taking advantage of. There is a very empowering and beneficial effect to being able to comm consistently that extends beyond the comms themselves, and in this video we'll be breaking down some of these advantages. So let's first brush over some of the benefits to comms. It's always funny to me because in game, it's a resource that's given straight up to both teams in order to help facilitate strategy, but it's one part of strategy that many players refuse to optimize despite its benefits. Chatting via voice basically adds a layer of communication that essentially gives you a third hand in game. Your teammates can respond faster to plays and you can be more aligned with your plays. It raises team morale and you can provide support. You can even take advantage of the fact that it's so underutilized to turn it into a consistent tool that you can utilize to have a strong influence in every game. It's just clearly something that adds a layer of knowledge to your team that can completely change the way your plays flow every round. Yeah, sure, there's pings and stuff, but that's a limited communication medium, and on top of that, it's a medium that is relatively invasive on your mouse and keyboard actions compared to simply speaking. By speaking in comms, you also set the tone for your team. You are basically giving up your information or speaking style in order to set the mood for your other teammates. If you do a good job in communicating, try to have a good time in game, or just show that you're trying your best, generally speaking, your teammates are going to reciprocate. If you consistently do this, you'll often find yourself in lobbies that consistently have a lot of comms, which means your teammates are more engaged in the game and are on average more willing to work with you. This is a huge potential impact on the game and your team's performance for just having to speak up a little bit at the beginning. I'm telling you, this style of play has huge dividends and it's something that way too few players utilize. So while the benefits are clearly there, we should also take some time to break down what goes into information communicated because there's also a right and a wrong way to do so. Generally, the key here is to be concise, informative, and simple while maintaining good tonality. Doing this correctly will build the right habits in these types of games, especially in fast-paced moments. The rule of thumb is to calm the most amount of information possible while using as few words as possible. This minimizes the time and difficulty in which it takes your team to respond. Sometimes it's also good to have that conversation with your teammate to think through together on what the best course of action could be. It helps align your team's way of thinking, gets you on the same page, and then when things do or don't go according to plan, you can work better together on improving that. Here's an example of communication piece. There could be a guy on B main, I'm not too sure though. This comm is okay, but relatively inefficient compared to what we could say. Raise through nade B main, it's just him, stick default. This uses a similar amount of words, but look at the amount of info I'm getting as a teammate now. I know what was used and who was there, I know the potential overall distribution of the enemy team and what to expect, and I know what strategy our team needs to go for and how I individually should be reacting to this information. There's so many more layers to break down to this one sentence, and we can consistently be applying this in every round. While describing all of the benefits of comms, we do have to take time to acknowledge some situations where it inevitably might not be as effective. The first one you and I are probably both thinking of is of course if you happen to be female. Unfortunately, online gaming communities have not made it much easier to communicate as a girl, so if you manage to still push on to do so despite some of the stigma associated with it, huge respect to you. I would advise that you express caution and kind of read the room to see if it's comfortable to do so though. I would also advise something similar in situations where it's relatively toxic and you don't seem to have much control over the situation. These games happen and there's not much you can do other than try to mute and try your best regardless. Adapting your comms to the right people is also a Skill. It's also just good communication overall. Voice comms are just one of the many resources that we as players have access to in order to build our skill set and maximize it and maximize our chances of winning in game. Therefore, it should be treated as such, and it's quite important to take every precaution possible in order to optimize this part of our game. 